So I was digging around over the last week and I managed to unearth this ancient relic from the distant past known as the Virtual Boy. And uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if a lot of people nowadays had never heard of this system because it's probably about as popular now as it was when it was released back then around 95. It didn't really sell all that well, but this was really one of the best examples of a system that got 3D right. And uh, that's part of the reason why it failed largely in advertising was this was a three-dimensional system and the only way you can really get a good grasp on the three-dimensional effect is to actually look into this yourself and play a game on it. And it did a really good job of it. Unfortunately, another thing was it was only in black and red because of the cost of development. This was the best they could, they could come up with back then. But uh, <laughs> really what I want to talk about is the controller that comes with the Virtual Boy. This is one of the coolest controllers. I remember when this came out back then. The only other thing to compare this to at the time was the Sega Genesis controller and the SNES controller. And this was way more advanced than that, even though you only have an A and a B button, which is only two. This had a second D-pad over here, so we have both sides have a D-pad that we can use. This was a really good idea. Unfortunately, the Virtual Boy didn't have a lot of games that came out with it, so they didn't really get to explore how how many possibilities there were for this new system, but we see how successful it was today with our modern controllers. Here's an Xbox 360, we have two. Same thing with your PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 controllers. They both have two sticks on there. And another really cool thing about the Virtual Boy controller is on the back of it, there are triggers. And this was really neat, too. I had never seen anything like this before. Uh, <laughs> the Sega Genesis, you bet there wasn't anything cool like that. There was, like, a mode button <laughs> that they'd moved up on the newer versions of the controller. But that was about it. And uh, with how good of a job the Virtual Boy did with three dimensions, I was really stoked about having some cool, like, shooter game come out that I'd be able to start plugging away at people. <laughs> Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but could you imagine, you know, playing, like, GoldenEye-style game, which is, you know, roughly the same time period, and, but playing it in 3D was, like, really a cool idea, but that just did not come to fruition. But we see how good of an idea the triggers are, again, on our modern controller. We have triggers and bumpers, because it was that successful of an idea. Another cool thing about the Virtual Boy controller was it had a battery pack on it, <laughs> a bit bigger than what we see here on the modern controller. But this allowed you to actually take this system anywhere, <laughs> and a lot of people, you know, kind of scoff at that because this thing is pretty heavy. It's like probably a good seven pounds. I mean, <laughs> it's not very portable. But I, you know, I took this thing in the back seat of the car plenty of times and laid down with, you know, my seat belt hazardously not very well covering me and <laughs> played some Mario Tennis back there on this thing. So I think that even though it didn't succeed in the market, it was a it was a good pioneering system that really gave us some good ideas for nowadays. And here you have it, the Virtual Boy and its controller.